Hey everybody, welcome back to Guitar Player Gear Demos, where we look at cool gadgets, cool gear, and everything related to guitar. Welcome back. My name is David Vignola. Thanks for stopping by and checking out this week's video. Uh, for more information around home recording, mixing, and mastering, uh, be sure to check out my other YouTube channel, Home Recording Made Easy. It will be below this video in the description box. The link will be there. Check that out. There's nearly 200 videos there, all free of charge to make better music and help you make better music in your home studio. So this week we are going to take a look at something really special. As you can see, I got the work table out and I got a box in front of me. And maybe you can or cannot see this, but we are going to take a look. Yes, we're going to take a look at a new Gibson guitar that I just got in. This week we have the Gibson 2017 Gibson Les Paul Traditional. Um, I just ordered it, it just came in fresh off the UPS truck and I wanted to do an unboxing video here. Um, I was really excited when uh, Gibson put out their new 2017 Les Paul line. I hear if, uh, what I've read, from what I've read and what I've heard, they're going back uh, to basics and there's no more frills and this is really uh, a straight up killer Les Paul from what I'm told and I'm really anxious to compare this to my R, uh, R8 and R7 uh, custom shop Les Pauls. These are not custom shop models of 2017. So in this video we're just going to do an unboxing. We're both going to look at it first together uh, and then in another video I'm going to go ahead and we're going to compare it to the custom shop models, the R7 and the R8. So this is going to be really special and really fun. So let's check this out. So we have the Gibson box here, all taped up uh, from uh, the repackaging over at Sweetwater.com. Sweetwater.com is where I buy 99% of everything uh, that I have in my studio. Uh, I buy from Sweetwater. They're fantastic. If you don't know about Sweetwater, click the link below in the description box and head on out and uh, talk to my buddy Josh. He is my personal sales engineer. I will leave his extension and his contact info in the description box as well. Josh is really cool and Josh has helped me out. I can't even tell you how many times. Uh, he helped me out tremendously with my uh, Kemper Profiler dilemma. And if you don't know what that's all about, go back in the archive and watch the Q&A video number five, where we talk about um, guitars and amplifiers. The whole story's there. And I gotta thank you, Josh, so much for helping me out of that bind. And also selling me this Les Paul, uh, which is really, really cool. So go check out Josh over at Sweetwater. Tell him I sent you if you need anything and he will take good care of you. So now, without further ado, let's open up this Les Paul. So I'm really super excited about this, like I need another Les Paul. Anyone that saw my video a few weeks ago, you know I already have two Les Pauls. So why am I buying another Les Paul, you may ask? Well, you know, I have a problem, which probably a lot of you have as well. It's called GAS, right? It's called gas, uh, where I'm just a guitar freak, man. I love new guitars. Uh, I'm a big Gibson Les Paul guy. I also have an ES-335 as well. I just love Gibson guitars. and. I don't know, sometimes when uh, Gibson puts out something new, I'm just a sucker. Uh, but have no fear, I sold a couple other guitars to fund this, so uh, I have to slim down my collection before I can add to the collection, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you do. So let's take a look at this now. I've only seen pictures of this, and, and this is the, uh, the antique sunburst, uh, which is really unique. If this was just a straight up heritage cherry sunburst or a, or a tobacco burst, I probably wouldn't have been uh, anxious to buy it, but the finish is just gorgeous on this according to the pictures. So let's uh, put this down and let's take a look at what we got. So as always, Sweetwater packs this really, really well. This came inside of another box, um, an outer box that Sweetwater put it in. This was the inner box, so it's double box, which is great. Sweetwater, if you don't know, will go through, I think, a, a 58 or a 60 different inspection point set up on every guitar they ship. So they open up all the guitars when you pick it out on their website. Um, they go through the entire setup, make sure it's uh, strung up with the gauge strings that you uh, request, uh, make sure the action and everything is set good, make sure the fit and finish is good, and then they rebox it for you. So that's really cool. It's one of the things I love about Sweetwater is you get a free setup with every purchase. Um, and if you want something set up a specific way, just talk to your sales engineer, like I talked to Josh, and, and they just take care of it, man. So, you know, sometimes you pay a little more when you buy things brand new, but you get that kind of service that you don't get when you buy stuff off of eBay. Um, so we're gonna just take this and we're just gonna, uh, we don't need that, right? All right, so let's take a look at this. It's like being Christmas in the middle of October, right? Cardboard, we don't need that. And now, oh, again, let's take a look at what we got. I'm a little jammed up here. Okay, we're gonna get rid of this uh, Gibson box and we're gonna take out the case here. All right, that's on the floor. So here we go, we have the Gibson, uh, the, old brown, the old brown case. 
These were, um, I don't know when the brown case was first introduced. I think sometime in the early 90s, when I had a 1996 or 97 Les Paul Classic, it came in a case like this with the pink lining inside, which I really, really liked. And then they did away with it for a while and they went to some different types of cases. And now they're coming back to the brown case, which is my favorite case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this in front of you so we can look at this together. You're actually gonna get a better look at it than me. So let's go ahead and let's Get all the latches here. See if we can get this up. Oh, there we go. All right, so you're gonna see this first and I'm gonna try to tilt it up and show it to you. I don't know why people like these unboxing videos, but they do. I like them too. I like watching people un unbox guitars, right, and gear. Oh, it's a bad hobby. <laughs> it's a bad habit to have. All right, here we go. So here it is. I'm not even, I haven't even seen it yet. You guys are gonna see it before me. I'm gonna tilt it up and let you look at it first. I'm just gonna look at it in the camera. And oh boy, let's take a look at that, huh? So let me, uh, we have our guitar evaluation uh, from the tech over at Sweetwater who took a look at this guitar, as I said, and set it up. Uh, this is done by David. Uh, I'm not gonna mention his last name here. I wouldn't do that without uh, his permission, but David, inspected David, me, his guitar, which is great. So they go through, they uh, do the serial number, they do a guitar, a guitar evaluation and setup to make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Thank you very much, David. On here we have um, a fretboard protector. Only Gibson is good enough. That's pretty cool. I think that's pretty new. I don't think Gibson has ever done this before. At least I don't have a Les Paul that has this. My custom shop didn't come with this cool little thing. So there's the fretboard protector. So okay, so now the case is a, is, a, is a deep red velvet, kind of a plush color, not pink like the old 90, uh, 90s cases, but still smells really good, right? So this is beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna put the case down, and then I'm gonna kinda move this table out of the way and, uh, and kinda bring, bring the guitar up close here for a second. So let me just take this out without dropping it. Wow, that's a beautiful guitar, look at that. The Antique Sunburst with the light color back, which I really like. Wow, what a beautiful finish on this guitar. My Lord, look at that. Let me close this. Let me be gentle with this. I don't want to drop it, right? So, I'm impressed already with what we got here. I'm just gonna take this out of the way, put this down without knocking the whole place over. Okay, let me set this over here for a second, carefully. Let me go ahead and let me, let me just get rid of this table and get it out of the way so you guys can see the guitar a little bit better. I'll take this out of the frame of the camera. Okay, so here we go. So let's take a look at this 2017 Les Paul Traditional. Let me take a look at the finish here. A beautiful antique finish. It's got a lot of natural, it's got a very light, uh, like a, a lemonish burst on the edges and then, then the middle of the, is all the natural wood. And this has a really, really, really nice flame on this. Let me get up here so you can see a little bit better what we're looking at here. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful finish. This is again, the traditional 2017. Rarely unique color, something that I don't think Gibson has done in the past, at least I've never seen it. And there's the back with the uh, standard, whoops, Clouson tuners here. So, I could tell you right off the bat compared to, and I have my 57 reissue gold top here just to do a quick comparison. We'll do some sound examples in another video, but just to get a feel for the weight. So this is a, this is a 2013 uh, gold top uh, R7 um, custom shop reissue. Um, and so the traditional is supposed to be a non-weight relief, and I will tell you, they are about the same weight. They probably weigh close to nine pounds. So definitely not weight relieved. That's 2017. Definitely a nice, a nice Gibson uh, heavy duty chunk here. Almost tuned up a little flat, but we're not gonna do that. It's got a nice 50s uh, kind of a chunky neck, which I like. I don't like a lot of the newer Les Pauls where they have the 60s style, the slim taper. Um, I have that same 60s style on my 335, and I'm not crazy about it, but I just love the way the 335 sounds, so I get used to it, but I much prefer the thicker's uh, 50s style neck. It's got the uh, Burst Bucker 1 and 2 
uh, pickups in it, just like in the uh, custom shop. So sound wise, we ought to get the same. Um, but this is a nice, uh, a nice slab of uh, a mahogany with a maple top, the rosewood fretboard, um, the 50s uh, profile neck, nice binding. I will tell you that the, uh, the fret work is really, really good. I have no sprouting on this. It's really, really nice, just like my custom shops. We'll take a look at the, some of the finishing work here that you guys can't really see. Just to see is Gibson on target with this 2017 model. And I will say, really nice finish, really nice uh, at the joint between the, the neck and the body. I don't see any overspray. I don't see anything that would look, you know, not proper. Everything, the uh, electronics cavity caps are all um, recessed, just like they should be. They got kind of this, it's plastic, but it's like a Tolexi feel, which is kind of neat. It's got like little bumps on it. I will say the fit and finish looks really, 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 really good. No buzzing. I know you guys can't hear this, but not bad, not bad at all. Not bad. The, the traditional, uh, you know, 50 style uh, headstock, which is Les Paul with the traditional um, truss rod cover. Again, the, um, the Gibson Deluxe tuners. A lot of people, um, you know, are not big fans of these tuners, and, I got, and they change them over to Grover tuners. I gotta tell you, I have these tuners in all my custom shops. They stay in tune pretty well. The secret to keeping a Les Paul in tune um, regardless of the tuners, but I'm um, using uh, Big Ben's Nut Sauce. If you don't know what Big Ben's Nut Sauce is, I'll put the link in the description where you can check it out. It's a lubrication where you, uh, when you change your strings, if you put them at the saddles and at the bridge, a little bit of lubrication, it helps keep these guitars in tune uh, very, very nice. And I have no problem with the tuners at all, but my, my, all my Les Pauls stay in tune, and they're, and they're usually, uh, Les Pauls are always known for not staying in tune very well. I don't tend to have that problem. Uh, so I, I like these tuners, I like the way they look. So this is just a quick unboxing video, guys. This is, this is a beautiful Les Paul. I mean, I gotta say, it looks really, really nice. The fit and finish is great. The neck feels really good. The fret work feels really nice. From what I can tell, again, I don't hear because the, my, my good buddy Dave over at Sweetwater set this up. This guitar doesn't buzz at all. The action is really, really low. Yeah, really, really low action. Doesn't buzz, set up really well. Sounds really, really good. Feels really, really good. Again, we're in the next video. We're going to take a look at some sound samples between this and the uh, and the custom shop just to see what the difference is. But I mean, even just strumming a G chord, I can feel the body resonating. It resonates really well, which is always a sign of a great guitar if it's constructed well. You know, if you strum a guitar open and feel the top of the headstock, you should hear that thing vibrate. You should feel it vibrate against your gut. If you can. That's a good sign that the guitar is probably constructed really well, even though this guitar is out of tune. But it, it resonates really well, just like my custom shops. Now, the deal is, you can say, well, why are you comparing this to a custom shop reissue? Well, the reissues are quite a bit more money, to be honest with you. Uh, a typical um, R7, R8, you know, they run around three grand, 3,200, depending on what the market wants, and used, they're running around 25, 2,600. Uh, if you get an, uh, an R9, the 59 reissue, they're even a little bit more. They're the most sought after. This guitar, uh, brand new, 2017, was uh, 2200 So for about a thousand bucks less, the traditional, um, it'll be interesting to see how it stacks up against the uh, against the Les Paul custom reissues, the, the R7 and the R8. So I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this video. Again, this is just a quick unboxing just to show you. This is, again, the 2017 Gibson Les Paul traditional in the antique sunburst which it's almost like a natural uh, finish. A lot, a lot of flame in this. Beautiful guitar. Really impressed with the way it's constructed. I don't see anything from a finishing standpoint um, that's uh, alarming. Um, it was set up, it seems beautifully like by the guys at Sweetwater. Again, go check out Josh and Sweetwater uh, if you need anything. Tell him I sent you. And maybe he'll send me something. <laughs> so again, until the next video, this has been David with GuitarPlayerGearDemos.com. Thanks for joining me. One more quick look, and then I'm going to head out, and we're going to do another demo video. There it is, guys. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you all soon. Take care.
Hey guys, so I get to the end of the video and I realize I probably didn't show you the most important part of this unboxing and that is all the case candy, right? I'm sure some of you was some of you were screaming at the screen going, how come you didn't show us what was in the pocket inside of the case? Sorry, I forgot. So here, I'm glad you stuck around till the end of the video to check this out. So I just want to show you quickly what comes in the case, all the case candy that comes with this new Les Paul uh, 2017 traditional. Uh, the very first thing we talked about earlier was the um, with the fretboard cover, which is really cool. Kind of neat. Um, in the uh, case as well, we have the uh, pick guard that is not attached to the to the uh, to the guitars you saw in the video a little earlier. Um, most people, I do as well. Uh, you have the pick guard, and I take those ugly pick guards off. I just don't personally like the way they look. And then they have screw holes inside of the body. Well, this doesn't have the screw holes uh, already pre-drilled. So if you want to mount the pick guard, they give you a pick guard with the two screws. You can put that on your 2017 Les Paul. Uh, something really cool, which I guess they've been doing now for a while. They send you a, a photo of your Les Paul as it's on the, it looks like to be the last uh, setup station uh, over at Gibson. And they, uh, they give you a nice photograph of your Les Paul, which is pretty good. Um, so Gibson does. That's a, ni a nice little touch. We also have the, um, let's see, this is the, uh, oh, this is the uh, kind of the, the card. Uh, with the date, the model number, serial number, who inspected it and who packaged it over at Gibson. Pretty good. So Gibson, we sweat the details. So they sweat the details and they want to make sure that your guitar is packed up just right and inspected just right. So that's in there as well. We also get a Gibson leather strap, a guitar strap, which is pretty cool. I'll we'll have to check that out and see how that's going to feel. We also have a Gibson polishing cloth that came in the case as well. We have something that's really cool, which I've never seen Gibson do. This is a multi-tool, which has the, uh, the truss rod wrench, some Allen keys, a Phillips and a common head screwdriver. So there's like a multi-tool here. When you want to do your setup on your Les Paul, you don't have to dig around your toolbox looking for wrenches. They give you a little multi-tool with the truss rod wrench right here, which is really nice. That's a pretty nice touch, Gibson. Really, really nice. Uh, again, we have the uh, guitar evaluation card from Sweetwater. When they set up the guitar, they go through a 50 point, a 55 point, very important um, setup on the guitars before they ship. We have the uh, good old Gibson warranty, little pamphlet. And then last, but certainly not least, we have your Les Paul owner's manual in case you don't know how to use your guitar. <laughs> so that is all the stuff that's in this little trusty pocket here. Uh, in, the, in the case, I just wanted to, uh, to, to circle on back and do that because I realized after I recorded the front half of this video, I didn't show you this stuff and everybody wants to know about the case candy, right? So that's what's in the case. Uh, again, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for stopping by Guitar Player Gear Demos and I'll see you at the next video. So if you have any questions at all, you can leave a comment below any one of the videos. I check all the comments, I read them all on a daily basis and I will respond to each and every one of your questions. So please feel free to go ahead and leave a comment below the videos. Also, please give me the old thumbs up if you like the video, share the video with other people, that really helps me out. And if you want some more uh, training on uh, things home recording guitar related, you can always head out to my other YouTube channel, Home Recording Made Easy. There's nearly 200 videos on that channel, all free of charge, that have uh, everything to do with mixing, mastering, and recording music in your home studio. So again, thank you once again for stopping by Guitar Player Gear Demos. Thank you so much for your support, and I will speak to you guys all soon. Take care.